الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد uh, I'm very really, uh, happy to be here with you all uh, with the community and Muslim space uh, today I want to take out some time to reflect with you on uh, an important piece of literature um, something that was written by a famous scholar of the 14th century uh, named Ibn Atta'illah al-Iskandari um, he died in the early 1300s. Um, he is a Maliki jurist, uh, an Ashari by Aqida, and he is someone that uh, was deeply involved in his spiritual community, uh, the spiritual community of Ashadili Tariqa. Um, and he was um, someone that was also credited and responsible for uh, codifying uh, or putting, uh, putting, uh, writing some books on the particular views of the Shadili order and some biography, a biography on the founder or founders. Um, so let me briefly share with you, uh, and I just don't want to mess up uh, the names of the founders. So Abu Hassan al Shadili, uh, rahmatullah alayhi, and uh, you know may God have mercy on all of all of these um, um, scholars and teachers of the past, uh, as well as Abu al Abbas al Mursi, who was a student uh, or successor of Abu Hassan al Shadili. So these were the um, um, uh, the the key um, the key leaders that really set uh, the Shadili order in place. And Ibn Atalla is coming later, and he writes a biography on the founder and also um, highlights some of the key teachings. So the book that I'm referring to, or the piece of literature I'm referring to by Ibn Atalla al Iskandari, is um, something. We, you may or may not have heard of, uh, it's often called the aphorisms of uh, Ibn Atta'illah um, and uh, in the Arabic it's Hikm al Atta'iya um, by his last name uh, and um, interestingly uh, this book is one which really engages people that are committed to a spiritual path or you know, within the boundaries of Islam, how can we really live a spiritual life that's rich and full? And I think there's there's much to be taken from this book. Um, but this one saying, um, and these this, these reflections by no way are authoritative, uh, you know, reflections uh, of the sort, I make no claim to that, but just general thoughts um, that I have that um, I found beneficial that I wanted to share with you and really reflect uh, alongside with you. So. This aphorism um, that I want to cover today, um, I have written down some um, thoughts about it, but you know, I think what we'll first do is just briefly sit with it. Uh, maybe I'll read it a couple of times. I'll read it slowly, and I'm just gonna sit with in silence for maybe you know, uh, you know, a few seconds, at least uh, ten seconds to twenty seconds, to just process. Uh, the saying and see how it hits your heart before I sort of give you my reflections on it um, because perhaps the way it hits your heart is the way that you're meant to take it so I want to give you some space to do that before I sort of uh, offer my thoughts and reflections on it so Bismillah uh, Ibn Atta'illah uh, shares with us uh, a, a piece of wisdom so this is aphorism 8 in the book um, and even though it is said that these aphorisms should be really read in order because there's a plan and purpose um, or there's a logic uh, to it uh, and so they were put into place and in a particular order for a reason so I want to just notate that um, out of respect for the author but um, but I am taking some liberty and jumping to number eight which um, resonated with me and I wanted to share with you all so uh, he writes, if he opens a door for you, if he, as in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, opens a door for you, thereby making himself known, pay no heed if your deeds do not measure up to this. For in truth, he has not opened it for you, but out of a desire to make himself known to you. Do you not know that he is the one who presented the knowledge of himself to you? Whereas you are the one who presented him with deeds? What a difference between what he brings to you and what you present to him. So, let, let me recite that again and then we'll sit with this. 
uh, in, in a few moments of silence, for a few, mo few, for a few seconds. If he opens a door for you, if he opens a door for you, thereby making himself known, pay no heed if your deeds do not measure up to this. For in truth, he has not opened it for you, but out of a desire to make himself known to you. Do you not know that he is the one who presented the knowledge of himself to you, whereas you are the one who presented him with deeds? What a difference between what he brings to you and what you present to him. So let me uh, give us a few seconds just to mull over what I've said. I think that hopefully was um, helpful, the few moments of silence to see what this might bring up for you. Um, uh, let me share with you some reflections. And again, this is just me sort of very loose reflections. Um, uh, by no means are they authoritative, um, but just, you know, something that sort of was relevant to my spiritual journey um, that I wanted to share with you all. So um, here are some of the thoughts that I had around this. What a world of difference there is between looking at ourselves through the lens of what we do and then what the Ar-Rahman or Ar-Rahman, the All-Merciful, has in mind for us. What the divine intent is for us in terms of getting to know him. So how, how big of a difference is there between this lens of just us centering our, our actions and then what Allah wants from us? We quantify our acts of worship, counting our good deeds on our fingers, calculating the extent to which we've lived up to the dictates of divine law. Our striving becomes the proof of our shortcomings and failures. The law becomes the voice of an inner critic that furnishes us with a never-ending list of evidence for how undeserving we really are. The law becomes a veil. That law, which is meant to be the outer limits of an open pasture, in which our mental, spiritual, and physical self may grow in balance, that law becomes veiled. This aphorism caresses our consciousness, like drifting waves on a shore, reorienting our narrowed vision to the, tr to the true purpose of law, and to the place of our deeds in relation to the All-Merciful, to Ar-Rahman. The doors that Ar-Rahman, the All-Merciful, opens for us in our lives are invitations of knowing. Questioning these openings on the basis of whether we live up to them is like questioning the wisdom of the one who opens the door in the first place. In looking at our deeds and cognizing our unworthiness, we risk missing the purpose of the invitation. The All-Wise, Al-Hakim, does not open doors for us to inflate our e egos. He does not open doors for us to inflate our egos, nor to feed our narcissistic wounds. It's not about how special we are or how special we are not, but rather it's about how special knowing Him is, how special knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So he opens doors and points us to the roads and ravines of our lives that collect and meet in the pool of knowing him. All that we encounter in this life is a means of knowing him. I see this hikam as Ibn Atayullah saying, look at the blessings and doors that he has opened for you um, as gusts of wind that are pushing you forward in your journey of knowing. Don't ask whether or not your deeds make you worthy of such invitations, but look instead to the nobility of your host and his desire for you and for you to be, uh, to have knowledge of him. So these were just some rough reflections on, um, and kind of threw in some of my poetry in here, um, on this aphorism. 
um, so what I'm really speaking to here is um, this huge difference in our state when we really pay attention to our deeds and how those can really be constant reminders of us falling short um, because we're human beings. Uh, we can't always, you know, fulfill everything um, that we want. So our expectations uh, of ourselves uh, always fall short when we really center ourselves and our deeds and we're more critical of ourselves and our deeds and we're, when we're self-reflective like that. Um, but on the other hand, um, when this gets to be such an extreme, um, we, we can become our own worst enemies in really leaving the door open for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show his gifts to us, right? And that we should take, take, take heed to looking at whatever God brings our way um, as invitations for knowing, knowing him. Um, and that what he brings our way uh, he does so out of mercy for us um, and that he's his mercy for us um, is what we should center in many ways so that we can receive what he gives to us as gifts and not as you know a result of our actions not as oh because I'm such a good person this is why I have this blessing but rather it's because um, Allah has mercy on you that you have those blessings or that we have these blessings, right? And some of us may be familiar with the narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I'm paraphrasing um, that, you know, he, he made the statement in, in, um, amongst his companions that none of, none of, um, no one will enter paradise, right? Because of his deeds, but rather because of uh, the fact that God had mercy on that person. And then his companions asked, not even you, Ya Rasulullah, uh, not even you, O Messenger of God. Uh, and he says, yes, not even me. So this sense that everything is from the fadl, um, from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, centering that um, is sometimes very necessary when we get caught up in this um, beating ourselves up and feeling like we're unworthy of the gifts that God gives to us. When we receive those gifts, to receive them with a level of grace that, oh, you know, it's not about how perfect I am before God, how 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 well I am fulfilling the obligations upon me, but, um, you know, it is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And that's not to say that we leave, you know, um, our efforts to uh, abide by the sharia, to follow the law, to follow the outward dictates of the law, but we're also cognizant of the inner dialogue of what's happening to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the process of trying to live up to uh, the dictates of the law. So I hope that um, has some resonance uh, with you. Um, I hope that's uh, helpful inshallah. Um, and I hope that it applies in, in some capacity to something you're going to and going through. Um, and I'm sure that, um, you know, this will look and apply very differently to different people and um, will resonate with some of you, perhaps not with others uh, in the way that I've described it. But I encourage you to actually visit um, this very rich book uh, by Ibn Atayla al-Iskandari and to look over some of these aphorisms and see if you can draw some inspiration from them and some healing from them uh, and find some enrichment in your own journey within Islam uh, through them. Uh, and, you know, maybe you will see in them things that I don't see in this particular juncture that may be more relevant to where you are. Um, and, you know, there are also commentaries uh, available, uh, uh, some brief commentaries and classes on the book available that I think I would also recommend you to, to supplement uh, um, uh, yourself with. I believe uh, there's one by uh, someone named Sheikh Walid, uh, a Sheikh named um, Walid Musad, uh, and there's a there might be another one, but uh, uh, being offered by Seekers Guidance, I believe. So um, I, I I recommend you kind of uh, whether it's you know you want to sit with the book and just reflect it, that's your style, or whether it's um, you know you kind of need the audio to kind of get perspectives on some of these things. I think. Either or would be beneficial, uh, I think. Um, but uh, I hope this has been helpful. And um, 
Inshallah, I look forward to uh, the next uh, time that I'm with you. Barakallahu feekum. Um, inshallah, we can conclude with uh, dua. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammadi wa ala ahli muhammadi wa kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ahli ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala muhammadi wa ala ahli muhammadi wa kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ahli ibrahim inna ka hamidun Ya Allah, we ask you to bless us, um, to grant us ease, Ya Rabbil Alameen, to heal our wounds, to grant us a rich spiritual life, Ya Rabbil Alameen, um, to grant us uh, knowledge of you, to grant us the ability to see your mercy in our lives and to be thankful for it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you to um, forgive uh, us for our sins, forgive um, all of all of the Muslimin, um, all of the Muslims and all of the believers, Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you to forgive them. We ask you to forgive our parents and guide our parents. We ask you um, to grant those of our elders that have passed away the highest levels of paradise uh, or the highest level of paradise. And we ask you, Ya Allah, to bless and guide our young um, and grant them clarity. Um, and we ask uh, you for forgiveness and for facilitation of forgiving one another, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that we don't hold grudges against one another, that we easily forgive, that we look for excuses for one another, um, uh, and that we don't suspect one another and assume things about one another that are unbefitting, um, and that we really give uh, one another uh, a full chance, Ya Rabbil Alameen, to really get to know one another before passing or casting judgments. Ya Allah, unite this Ummah and guide us and grant us um, wisdom, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and clarity. Bi rahmatika, Ya Arham al Rahimeen. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa